I want to ask you too about this book that I think was it Jonathan that brought to your attention this book written by the ex governing body member. Yeah, yeah, the, so, the number one apostate. So I don't know about this guy or this book. I had you never don't? heard about this before. No, no. Lord. Who's the guy? What's the book? Oh, oh my gosh. So there's this book, and this was one of those sort of apostate folklore things I had heard about before I left. Um, and keep in mind, like, before the internet, how would anyone get information about, say, exactly. what this is? Yeah. Like, you, you would not be able to find any other people that left or hear a podcast of interviewing one. Um, but there was this book that a guy in the 80s who was one of the very head, head honchos of the witnesses, the governing body, he started to kind of wake up the way that we did. But he was at the headquarters and he was quite elderly at the time. And he started to see that the organization was getting more and more um, like extremist kind of. And so he started trying to like push back from within. But eventually it, it became clear that he was like pushing back too much and it realizing that this organization was actually like subverting the Bible and like theology and the thing is he was still a christian after he left unlike me but he kind of saw the same things wrong so he wrote this really intelligent book and he was an insider and had all this information that wasn't accessible to the rank and file jehovah's witnesses so jonathan like tracked down this book and sent it to me and um i was a little afraid of it by this point i was sort of more open to being like okay like i'm not gonna like not read something. I, I think that I should open myself enough to like be willing to challenge what I believe. And I remember I started to read it and I was in a, I went to a wine bar actually, um, two for one wine before 7 p.m. I think that helped to start opening and reading the book. But within, I don't know, like the first chapter, I, I remember feeling this overwhelming feeling of like relief because I, 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 that far in, I started to realize like, oh my gosh, it's not true. It's this religion, my whole life, like the police system, it's not true. Um, and I wasn't ready to like walk away from it that at that point, because it, oh my God, you're so entangled in it. I'm in China. I'm like a missionary. I've never had a real career or like my families and my friends. I don't have people on the outside, but I remember still, I felt this sense of relief that I, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have to do it anymore. Like if it's not true, I don't have to do it anymore. And mm -hmm. that was what that book did for me. Once I got to the end of it, I was like, I'm done. So you have this revelation that this is this thing that you believe very strongly in. For how how old are you at this point? I was like thirty two. Okay, so this thing this this entire belief system that you had for thirty two years, you're now completely done with because this guy has as has urged you to question things and given you this book, and then you and then you basically it started out as a work relationship but it becomes kind of, it turns into something else. You're still married. Your husband is yes. with you in with China, right? With my child right? bride husband, my child groom. Right. And you got We've married been together like 10 years now or whatever, more than 10 years. Okay. Right, right. Uh, and so you're kind of having this kind of online um, intellectual affair in a way. Yeah this whole time and then you decide to meet up with this guy for the first time right yeah and you wind up having sex but then what happened what happens with this relationship kind of it's not all it's cracked up to be right yeah but i mean what is it cracked up to be <laughs> when you've like only what? spoken online and you've like um yeah, no. So basically, like, I, I think for me, what it was, was it was like one of those turning point. It was one of those relationships that, and we're, we're friends to this day, but it was exactly what I needed at the time to get out. Because I think that like, to change your life to that degree, I've read some research since that talks about one of the only ways that someone will get out of a high control group like this or a cult is if they have an intimate relationship with someone on the outside. And that doesn't mean it has to be physically intimate. It could be intellectually or emotionally intimate. Just the fact that there's someone you trust is telling you things that sound scary and against everything you believe in and that could actually blow up your life, but you trust them. And we had gotten to the point because of, I think it was very e much easier. I don't think I would have ever done this if the if he had lived in Shanghai and we were meeting for coffee every week talking about this stuff. There was something about in our religion how all of the things that were wrong were like bodily, you know, like everything was the flesh, the weakness of the flesh. And because I couldn't see him, but I could talk to him, it was like this back door. 
where I could sort of gain this intimacy and enough intimacy where I trusted him. But then to actually get out of my marriage, you know, as a Jehovah's Witness, you cannot leave your husband unless you cheat on them. Like the whole construct is set up such that like you need to actually commit adultery to end your marriage. So basically Jonathan became that person for me. Um, and I felt like I, I didn't plan to, I didn't, you know, I felt really bad afterwards, but I also realized it was like what I needed to get out, to get over the hump of like getting to the point where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm out, I'm escaping. I sort of had to like, it's like I said in my book this actually, all, everything when you're a Jehovah's Witness is about apocalypse. Like ev everything's about everything getting destroyed, blown up. Everything is on these like very dramatic terms, the way that you think about the world when you're living in a religion like that. And so it was almost like to end, to, like, to, to end that part of my life, I had to blow it up in some way. Like you had to do the worst thing. And they set it up that way because you had to commit adultery to get out of your marriage. You couldn't just leave. Like you had to do, have sex with someone to be able to get yeah. divorced. So it, it enabled me to do that. And of course, How like, convenient. There was a, there was, you're like, <laughs> twist my arm, why don't you? I know, but of course <laughs> I feel bad. It caused carnage. Like I, I, it hurts people. Um, sure, sure. So it's not like but I you're right. take that you are, you are You are pushed to do that because if you hadn't yeah. done that and you, and you just voiced concern to the elders of like, I'm not happy in this marriage. I don't believe this anymore. It would have been this ongoing, continuous effort to try to rope you rope you yeah. back in and I and had done re that reprogram you yeah I had yeah. done that and it was ongoing and they never let you go they just like want to have more meetings with you and they don't believe you and especially as a woman I don't think they think of you as having agency so even when you're standing there telling them that is not really an option available to you right right well you you had I've, I've made a couple of notations here um some really interesting points when you realize that the truth about Jehovah's Witnesses and the fact that they are a cult, because I was in denial about that for a long time. Um, you said, if it is the true religion, shouldn't it be opening to constant questioning and scrutiny, which it's not. Everything is just dismissed and shut down as soon as possible. Um, they have to retrain or eject the doubters in order to survive. They're elitists that have divided the world into us and them. Uh, there's a myth and illusion of love withdrawn at the first sign of nonconformity, which that that's absolutely true. They do they do profess to be the most loving, welcoming, embracing, non-judgmental people, but that's only true if you fall within their very tight, strict parameters. Yeah. Um, but then going back to what you said earlier, in terms of you believing it, even when your parents didn't. You said, in in actuality, the most ambitious and strong-willed people are the ones that join cults. So you, because um, it seems like it seems like you have. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. You are, uh, I guess, a bit of a seeker, for lack of a better word. You want yeah. to know, right? So, yeah. if if you're just very complacent in life and not really seeking to know more, or learn more, or strive for better. Um, I think that's true. Any any sort of cult documentary that I've seen, people that are born into it, that's one thing. But people that join cults, very rarely are they, um, you know, they're not like simple-minded people. They're people that want more out of life. So I thought that was an interesting point. But then yeah, you had the also, question. Oh, sorry. Go I was going to add just one thing is that the other thing I think is really been interesting to me to think about for a long time is all the smart people I know that are inside still. And so you might think like, oh, there's like docile, you're like docile or like easily led so that you would stay in a group like this. And a lot of them were born into it like me, like I would have never joined had I not been born into it. But the thing is, I remember very clearly, like, what is the thing? And the thing is, belief is a choice. And because you're invested in something, your family's in it, your friends are in it, you want to live forever, whatever it is the thing is that hooks you, no matter how smart you are, you can still at the end of the day make a choice to believe it because it's worth it to you to do so. Um, mm -hmm. And then basically what happened to me at the end was that when I got to the point where intellectually I could not believe it anymore, I couldn't choose to believe it anymore because it was not impossible. It was not possible for me to believe it anymore. So like, I always think about that. It's like it's like anyone could be in a cult. It's not like some special person. Um, 
But it's because, I mean, even you see it now with politically or anything, you can choose to sort of exclude the information that is uncomfortable or that challenges or that like threatens the life that you have that you, as you know it, the life that you want to have. Um, it's not about how smart you are or docile or anything else. Right. And I'm sure a lot of the the smart, smarter, more um, intellectually savvy people that you know that are still in it, I'm sure that a lot of them probably question it. But another thing that you bring up was you, you said, I was in the truth because I was afraid of the truth. And then you kind of questioned, am I happier and you don't know, you didn't know if you were happier. You knew things were easier then. And I think that's true too. I mean, I still know, I don't really know. I'm an, I'm far enough removed from it now. I don't know. I'm not connected to anybody that's still in it, but I yeah. know that there were plenty of people that were still in my congregation that stayed there when I left that didn't believe it, but that had invested so much time and energy into it and had this community and this family life that, to leave and hit the reset button would just be, it would just be too much work. And it's, they may not believe it, but it's, it's, you know, it takes a lot of effort and courage to blow up your life and start over. And I think a lot of people are just like, well, I don't believe this, but it's, it's, it's too late to turn back now. Yeah. And what's interesting is that I've, since my book came out, I've gotten thousands, I would say of emails from people and what's really interesting is I think that it's hard to imagine that you could have another life or that you could be happy or that it'd be worth it. But I have never once in all of these thousands of people. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Do you guys have that happening? Oh, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I got an email warning about this. I don't know why it's not How happening on my off? phone. <laughs> I guess they don't want me. Oh, my God. That was so loud. A, well, it works. Isn't like a worldwide it's Amber Armageddon. <laughs> it's Armageddon. <laughs> Oh, there it goes for me. <laughs> well, apparently in Brooklyn Heights, we'll get warned before you in Park Slope. <laughs> Elitist motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Anyways, what was that? Before Armageddon distracted us. Um, oh, you, I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. Okay. If you want to keep it. just And the thing is, is that like of all those thousands of people who have written me and who have left, I've never once heard anyone, no matter what trials they've had to endure I've ne or what isolation... I've never heard anyone once say that they regret it ever. Like they all will say it has been so hard, but I'm so grateful that I got out. And I feel the same. Like it was brutally hard and terrible things have happened, but like terrible things happen to, in life. That's just life. And the fact that you have, like I have authentic relationships now that I have been gone to school, that I can do work that is satisfying. And even that I can live my life with death in mind, like that I will live my life in a way that is truthful, as you say, because I'm not living in some fantasy to imagine that like I'm putting off my real life till some distant future that where I'm going to live forever. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that's such a gift because like if you approach your life not thinking of it as finite, you're going to do a lot of different things with your life. And I think there's a lot of meaning that's loss, which is like why I'm an existentialist now. I'm not religious, but I'm like existentialism is the thing that to me is the closest thing to a religion because it's the most honest and truthful. And I think it breeds um, appreciation, gratitude. And like when you just look at life as it really is, which is you, nothing is certain, you know.